be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ did not rise. And if Christ did not rise, then is our preaching vain and your faith is vain. Everything that we believe, thank God, hinges on the resurrection. Thank God. If in this life only we had hope in Christ, we would be of all men most miserable. Thank God it's not over in this life, but there is an eternity. There is a resurrection that's going to take place of the dead. There is a hope beyond this life, and I'm looking forward to that. Thank God. But, but now is Christ risen from the dead and, because, and became the first fruits of them that sleep. And because he is alive, thank God, we can know that, thank God, he is more than a savior. But he is our risen king and Lord of lords. I want to preach from this thought, why the resurrection? Let's ask God to help us. God, we praise you. Pray for everyone that's here today that the Holy Ghost is going to do something special in someone's life today. Let someone leave here different than they came. We ask it to be done in Jesus' name. We praise you today. Thank you today. Thank you today. Let's give him another praise with our hands. Help us today, God. Help this message to flow today. And ask your help in Jesus' name. Thank God. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. I do want to mention for all of you's sake, um, I think everybody's aware of Sister Sabrina, uh, Sabrina passing away. And the service will be uh, Tuesday at 11 o'clock here at the church. And tomorrow night the um, wake will be from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And Hopefully everyone will pay their respects, and, um, and God will just help the family through their time of sorrow and grief. Thank God. Why the resurrection? The whole gospel is wrapped up in the, the resurrection because the, the whole gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul is writing this here in answer to a group of people. There was a group of people that did not believe in the resurrection, and they were debating um, about that and so Paul says, you know, if there is no resurrection, then everything that we believe is really in vain because it's all built on the fact that he arose. And so the, Paul is saying if there is not a resurrection, then nothing else really matters. And there are some other events that had to take place for the resurrection really to do what it does for us today. First, there had to be a virgin birth because it, had there not been a virgin birth, then sinless blood could not have been shed at Calvary. And so thank God for the virgin birth that we celebrate at Christmas time. And then there had to be 39 stripes laid on his back because Isaiah 53 and 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisements of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. And so today we can proclaim healing through the name of Jesus Christ because of the stripes. So thank God for that taking place. And then there had to be a cross because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And so there had to be the sinless blood that was sacrificed for all. But all of these other events could have taken place. But if there had not been a resurrection, then his birth and his stripes and all the other would just have not had the significance that it has today. But today we celebrate not a dead Christ, but a living Christ. And 1 Corinthians um, 15 and 50 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruptible put on incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible is going to put on incorruption, and this mortal is going to put on immortality. And the reason we have this hope today is because he lives. And because he lives, we can live again. And I've come to remind everyone, praise God. That there is more to life than just a few days on this earth. It would be so easy to just think that when we die, that's the end. But I'm telling you, this life is only a preparation for an eternity that we're going to spend somewhere. And so I've come to remind everyone that there's more than just a few days on this earth. Job said it well, man's days are short and full of trouble. Not, and it doesn't seem like that. Sometimes that life is that long, even at its longest. So I don't want to lose sight of what this is all about. Life is about getting ready to spend eternity. And if you will come to God 
Thank God you can say with Paul because Paul was able to say, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, which giveth us us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise God. So we can have victory today. After Jesus arose from the dead, he began to let his followers um, know all that had happened was all a part of a God's plan of redemption. Today, you're a part of God's plan because God allowed you to be here today. God has a plan in every day life, every day we live. God has a plan. Thank God. If it, it had not, I'm thankful that it did not end. Thank God. But it began with the resurrection. Thank God. And so when he resurrected, then he was able to say, now I can finish what God had planned. The story of redemption can be complete. And so in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 15, after Jesus had arisen from the dead, he began to tell his disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They're going to cast out devils. They're going to speak with new tongues. And if they drink, they're going to take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And so today, I can tell you, thank God, he's not on the cross. I can tell you he's not in the tomb, thank God, but he has arisen, and he is alive. Hey, God, I'm thankful for the resurrection today. God was, thank God. And because of that, now God can have a relationship with us that was not possible. The Old Testament saints, he moved on them. And the Bible says they even wrote the scripture as they were just moved on by the Holy Ghost. In the Gospels, he was with them and he walked with them and he talked with them. But now he can dwell in us. And what Calvary was all about, what the resurrection was all about, was so that he could someday pour his spirit out upon us and we could be filled with the Holy Ghost and our lives could be transformed with the end. In the old law, it was weak because it tried to get a man to live the best that he could and he tried to do his best. But in our best, we make a a miserable mess of everything. And so the Lord's ultimate plan was that he would make it where that he could be in us not just with us. And so what the baptism of the Spirit is, is Christ coming to live in you. And so the answer to the question of why the resurrection, thank God, it is to validate everything that God had promised in His Word. When we look at the Word of God, everything was validated that morning when Jesus arose on that first Easter Sunday morning. When He arose, everything became validated. So sins could be forgiven Because the blood was shed. Your body could be healed because the stripes were taken on his back. And so you can be delivered from drugs and from alcohol and from tobacco. For whatever would have you bound today, you can be set free. Some of you today have brought um, things that are bottled up in you that are deep hurts that have happened to you through your life. Bitternesses that are there. People that have uh, done you wrong. Unforgiveness that's been hard to be able to forgive for what someone has done to you. And God only knows what some of the other things are that you've carried for a long time. And I want you to know that there is a place at the feet of Jesus where that you can cast all your cares. You can cast all your hurt. You can bring all of your wounds. You can bring all of your bitternesses and everything that ever has happened to you. And lay it at the feet of Jesus. Like the woman that came that was a sinful woman. Matter of fact, uh, Jesus was criticized because he even let the woman touch him. But when she began to wash his feet with her tears and she broke her alabaster box that day and she humbled herself before him, Jesus said, thy sins be forgiven thee. And there at the foot of his Jesus, her whole life took a whole new dimension. And today, here we are at, again, the foot of the cross. We're at that moment where that blood can be, has been shed and where that peace can be found and where that the answer to your situation can be ministered to today. And so there is a God that is very present today to help whatever your situation is. Thank God. And it's still at His feet that peace can be found. It's still at His feet that the joy can be found. It's still at His feet that you can find salvation that will make life so different for you. The resurrection is about a God that can turn your tragedies into triumph. Thank God. If life will, um, we, we all will face some tragedies. We all face some hard places in life. Thank God. But God can use those things that seem to be so hard. God can take them and he can use them for good. 
Matter of fact, he has this promise in his word. And we know that all things work together to the good of them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. So how would Romans 8 and 28 read in your life today? If you personalize this today, how would you read this? And God, in your hospital stay, God is working for your good. In the divorce papers, God is working for your good. In that prison term, God is working for your good. In that job layoff, God is working for your good. Thank God. Put yourself into Romans 8 and 28 and just see how it would read. It may seem to read very awkward today. It may seem to read very hard today. How could this be working for my good? This tragedy that's going on in my life, this situation that I'm going through. And I don't know what tragedy it is that you are facing today. All I know is that God can turn a tragedy into a triumph if you will just trust him. And so many times, thank God, who would have ever thought on a Friday when Jesus was crucified, what a tragedy, what an injustice was done that day, what a a terrible affliction was put on a, a human being just to hang him on that tree and let him die there. Who would have ever dreamed that Someday we would look back at Friday, which was a black day and a a sad day, and we'd say, it's Good Friday. Thank God. How could we say it was a Good Friday? Because we knew that Sunday was coming. We knew that something was going to happen. Praise God. And so today, I recognize that you may be facing a situation that looks so utterly hopeless and despairing that you can't see any good coming out of your situation. But I've come to tell you that there's a God that can take a tragic day And he can turn it into a victorious day. He can make something beautiful happen in your life today. One day, if you will, let God, thank God, he will do for you, thank God, what no one else could do. Thank God, one day you could look back at this chapter in your life. And you could say, you know, I thought it was going to be a terrible chapter. I thought it was going to have a a very sad ending. But God stepped on the scene. And so when you read that chapter, one day, looking back over your life, you're going to be able to say, thank God, The the devil meant it for my harm. The devil meant it for my destruction. But God turned my tragedy into a victory. Thank God. Your your living does not have to be uh, in despair. You don't have to let life just overwhelm you and feel despair today. What a wonderful moment it is when you bring Jesus Christ into your life. And you begin to find the peace that only he can give. You begin to find the hope that only he can give you today. And so he's a fresh God that brings fresh blessings and goodness into our lives while we're standing today you your your life can be so different today thank god because it can end in victory it doesn't have to end in despair because there was a resurrection i can offer you forgiveness for your sins today because there was a resurrection i can offer you joy for your sorrow or because there was a resurrection i can offer, offer you peace in your storm thank god and because of your his resurrection I can offer you salvation, thank God, that fadeth not away. A God that can bring deliverance into your life and bring peace into your situation. And I don't know what brought you here today, what your heads are bowed, and we just look to the Lord for a moment here today. I don't know what struggles you're in. I don't know what your situation may have. Thank God. But there's a God that can bring peace into your life. There's a God that can bring healing to your soul. There's a God that can put families back together. He can put hearts back together. He can put lives back together. Thank God. Because he's alive. Thank God. And he is well able to help you today. Thank God. His grace is more than sufficient. His mercy is everlasting. Thank God. You can't go so far that he can't reach to where you are today. And so as we take this moment in his presence that we just want to let the Holy Ghost reach to where you're at today. That little tug that you feel at your heart. That little draw that you feel on your soul it's the spirit of jesus christ that's saying come unto me all you that are weary and heavy laden i want to give you rest i want to give you peace i want to give you joy i want to give you hope today thank god he really does love you thank god he proved it at calvary thank god and all he asked you to do